Okay, I'm going to show you how I cut the uh, true sound hole and where I start with it. So there is the inside of the slow air chamber. Excuse the chucks having a go outside. And there's the outside of the exit from the slow air chamber. You'll see I've routed, using my Dremel router, the ramp, the, sorry, uh, the flue there. The ramp has been cut with chisels and files. And the, uh, what I call the outrun or the overrun there. And the true sound hole has been cut with a combination of burning the initial hole and then using files to shape and size out the hole. But of course, this leaves a tall cliff shelf here. So what you have to do is turn over it upside down and cut away the inside of the flute to make a ramp, which leads to a sharp cutting edge. I'm just going to move the camera here so that it's... Uh... Okay, I've moved the camera so that it's showing the relevant bit of flute and so that it doesn't fall off where it's mounted. And you'll see that I'm placing my chisel in line with the slot of cut for the true sound hole. And I'm just pushing with my hand and guiding with my left hand. Just gently wiggling back and forth so that it cuts. And then when it does cut, I let go of the pressure instantly because otherwise you're going to go back into that cliff edge at the south, at the north end of the uh, true sound hole and that would be bad. So I'll do the same again. And if it stops, just gently wiggling back and forth a little bit of back, uh, forward pressure on it just to uh, keep it moving forwards. Now, if you get this kind of thing, you might be able to get away with just down the edge there and slicing it off. If, when you do that, it goes all the way to the end and still doesn't fall off, you can use a knife to cut across the end piece like that to just chop off that little bit of shaving. Once again, sliding forwards, taking a little bit more this time. And there, Now, can you see? Oh, it did come off. Cool. Now, I'm looking over the top here to see how deep that splitting edge is. And at the moment, it's about two millimetres deep. So I've got a little way to go yet. Trying to keep the pressure on both sides of the chisel, both sides of the cutting edge of the chisel, exactly even so that that shaving that comes off is the same thickness all the way across. If you don't, you end up with a sloping splitting edge, and that takes some fixing. Now you'll see that I'm using a fairly shallow cutting angle with this flute. It doesn't actually matter that much. I mean, you'll get a different, a slightly different sound, I think, from a 30 degree ramp and a 45 degree ramp. But do you know what? I haven't got perfect pitch. I can't tell the difference in the sound. There must be one, but I can't tell. So I don't bother about it. Now, I think we've got almost to the thickness we want there. Okay, so we're about one millimetre thick there. So maybe I'll take one more very thin shaving off. Give you a bit of a better view of the actual hole. Now, I can see that it's a little bit deeper on this side than it is on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take off tiny little shavings until I've got the same width cut all the way across. Now you can just gently tap back and forth like that when you've got a burr edge and it will cut but you've got to be so gentle because if you go too deep here then you've trashed your flute or you've made yourself a big repair job now that is 
about the thickness I want to cut. Yeah, it's about. I try and show you that it's about three quarters of a millimeter to a millimeter thick, and the rest I'm going to do with filing. And for that, I use something called a diamond file. It's it's not got actual diamonds in it, I don't think, but it's a very very fine, very very sharp file which takes off the tiniest amounts each time now you'll notice I'm not putting any pressure here and I'm guiding that pressure with my left hand and again very little pressure there what I'm trying to avoid is cutting too deeply blow away the uh, sawdust and what we've got there is a pretty sharp edge now you don't want a really sharp edge when it comes to splitting the airflow you want a curved edge and also we've made the uh, sound hole rather less than rectangular so I've just got a file back there and now we've got a slightly deeper cutting edge on this side so without filing any more off the edge I cut the slope a little shallower and again this finger is guiding the pressure to the left hand side of that file still a little deeper on this side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I think the depth is coming from the outside so I'm just going to file the outside there and you know what I think that might be what I'm looking for now if I start off with incredibly sharp cutting edge I can then blunt it a little bit once uh, I've got the flute assembled just by using files up and down on here. If you cut it too blunt it's really difficult to get back into the flute to, uh, to sharpen it. So if I start with really sharp and the hole, the true sound hole, a little smaller than is necessarily ideal then I've got space to work. Now it might just play a beautiful note when it's assembled and that's great in which case I won't play with it anymore but you make it sharp with a sharp edge at the north end of the sound hole as well and then you can work on it from there and improve things once it's assembled. <laughs> 